The Nintendo Switch has a pretty diverse year one library with a wide variety of genres of games that you might not have even seen on the Wii U. There's first person shooters, there's open world adventures, there's epic RPGs. But one area that has been a bit lacking is a in racing games. You have, of course, the excellent Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but other than that, there hasn't been much, especially if you're a car enthusiast. If you like real cars, there's been nothing for you until Gear Club Unlimited was announced. Now, Gear Club Unlimited is a port of a mobile game, but the developer said that not to consider this game a mobile game. This is really tailored to the Nintendo Switch, and this version of the game was developed with the Nintendo Switch in mind. So Gear Club Unlimited, what is it all about? Is it a racing fan's dream on the Nintendo Switch? Is it a game you should check out? Let's find out in my review of Gear Club Unlimited for the Nintendo Switch. So like many racing games, Gear Club Unlimited starts out with you having a lump sum of money, you could purchase a vehicle and then it's off to the races. And one thing about this game is the vehicle lineup. I think the vehicle lineup is pretty solid, maybe a bit small. There's a good variety of manufacturers here. You got stuff from Mercedes, you have stuff from BMW, you have high powered Ford Mustangs, you have Lotuses, definitely high end vehicles. So if you like stuff like that, this will be a good game for you because there's a lot of high powered vehicles to control in this game. Now one of the things about a racing game of course is customizing your vehicle and the way Gear Club works is actually pretty interesting. You get this garage and you can add different pieces to your garage such as you know a place to paint your car, a place to upgrade your engine, a place to upgrade your brakes and whatnot. So you can sort of it's sort of like micromanaging. You can also add in random things like a coffee machine and a soda machine and a tree. I, I don't know that was kind of weird but basically your garage is sort of like your area to do things to your vehicle. And you could do a lot of things to your vehicle to make it customized to your needs. You can upgrade engines and brakes like I mentioned. You can add cosmetic things like different rims, different front bumpers, different back bumpers, stuff like that. And of course you can paint your vehicle. So you can really make your vehicle sort of your vehicle, make it custom tailored to your liking. Now of course, after that, you are hitting the racetrack. And there are over 400 different races in this game. And that sounds like a lot, but some of these races are pretty short. Some of these races are under a minute long. And at first I was kind of like, oh, this is kind of weird, but then there are longer races and I sort of understood why they went with that route because they obviously developed this with the sort of portable aspect in mind. Because if you're, you know, out in public or something or you're riding a bus, I don't think a 50 lap race like you would have something in Gran Turismo is really smart to do because you're not going to have enough time to finish it. So it sort of makes sense why some races are shorter and I don't really mind it now that I think about it but I do enjoy the longer races a bit more because there's a bit more action now there's a bunch like I said there's a bunch of different races and the way you access more races is by unlocking them you unlock them via stars after every race you're given a rating from one to three stars the more stars you get of course the better because you can then access different areas different vehicles and things of that nature and you also get more money now, one thing I do want to mention is the difficulty in the game seems a bit low. There's three different difficulty settings and they have different assists. So like driving assist and steering assist, brake assist and whatnot. And when I was playing on normal, I thought the game was a bit too easy. I ended up turning off all the assist options and I started to enjoy the game a bit more. So that's something that you might want to factor in when you're playing this game. Now, as far as the actual driving is concerned, it's definitely not a simulation game. Yes, there are realistic cars. Yes, there are realistic looking environments, but it's not really a realistic racing game. It's definitely more on the arcade side of things. Kind of feels like a Need for Speed game, like an old school Need for Speed game. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just, you know, when you hit a vehicle, you just sort of bump off of them and slow down instead of like coming to a crash and flying through the front windshield or something. So that is worth noting with this game because if you're expecting, you know, something like Gran Turismo, it's definitely not in that lineup, but it's still a solid racing game. The racing mechanics feel decent enough and the ability to customize your car in any way sort of gives you more freedom with how the cars handle, how they look and whatnot. So all the cars have unique engine noises. So that's nice as well when you're on the tracks racing. Now you unlock different areas and you can actually unlock different things such as different racing modes, such as a rally mode. And then you're racing on dirt and stuff. So you have to get rally inspired stuff and it feels really different. You'll be sliding all over the place and whatnot not doing really nice drifts and whatever. It's pretty cool, honestly. I 
enjoy the way that the game mixes up different racing styles. You know, it's not just street racing and whatnot. It's actual has dirt racing in there too. So that's good. Although you can't really customize your car to look like a dirt car. You can buy a car that looks like a dirt car, but you can't really customize your car like that. That, that kind of bothered me a little bit, but really no big deal. Now, graphically speaking, the game looks solid, if not a bit underwhelming. All the car vehicles, all the vehicles look nice, but once you actually like open the doors and stuff and look inside of the vehicles, it gets a little bit blurry. It's definitely still has that mobile smell to it. You know, it's definitely not a mobile feeling game, but there's definitely that mobile smell. Now the mobile aspect, of Gear Club Unlimited was the fact that there was microtransactions in the game. I believe it was free to start and then you had to pay to unlock different stuff. Whereas the Switch version has everything unlocked from the get-go, you just unlock it via racing. You don't have to worry about spending actual money. So that's a positive aspect, but Graphically speaking, it's pretty solid. You know, most of the courses look nice. Most of the courses have nice, you know, stuff going on in the backgrounds. Uh, maybe a little bit blurry at times. Uh, the frame rate's pretty solid as well. Sometimes it does get a little bit slow with certain vehicles, I noticed. But for the most part, it's a pretty smooth racing experience. Just don't expect anything groundbreaking. It's serviceable. It gets the job done and there's a lot to do in this game like i said there's over 400 races so you're going to be putting a lot of time into this game should you choose to do so now as far as online racing is concerned unfortunately there is no standard online racing the way online racing works though is actually kind of unique so basically there are challenges that you do there are daily challenges and i believe weekly challenges as well and you race on a certain area against other people's ghosts and there's a leaderboard system so Whoever gets the highest score is then on top of the leaderboard and then you unlock things for your single player experience. And on the surface, it sounds kind of boring, but it's actually kind of fun to try to beat these other racers and beat these other ghosts and get to the top of the leaderboard. I would have loved to have seen a traditional multiplayer aspect with online racing, but unfortunately, it's just not in this game. So if you're looking for a solid online racer, Gear Club isn't going to be it because there is no online racing. Now, as far as local multiplayer go, the game is very good, honestly. You can have up to four people on the uh, tablet mode or you can have it, you know, four people uh, split screen on your television and you could use a single Joy-Con and it works really well that, you know, it's very smooth still in that mode. The handheld mode version of the game looks very good. Honestly, I think the handheld looks a little bit better than it does on TV, which is really weird because usually it's the opposite, but just my personal opinion I think that the handheld version looks a little bit cleaner maybe it's just my settings on my TV or whatever but I've never really noticed it with another switch game but all in all it looks decent enough and it runs decent enough you don't have to worry about like that blurry screen that some of these games have when in mobile mode or in handheld mode it still looks pretty clean all in all, Gear Club is an interesting game. It's not a great game, it's not a great racing game, but if you like realistic cars and whatnot, you'll have some fun with the game. I would think the biggest problem with the game is actually the price point. It's a $50 game, and I just feel like having no online multiplayer it's kind of tough to you know sell it at 50 bucks i think at 40 bucks it would have been a much easier pill to swallow i think i would have you know been able to recommend this game more if you're definitely a car enthusiast you love realistic cars you love realistic racing um then this game will sort of be for you but the racing aspect isn't very realistic but if you like different cars and stuff like that and you're jonesing for a more realistic experience, more so than Mario Kart 8, Gear Club is definitely worth checking out. If you're more of just a casual race fan, you might wanna wait for a price drop. All of the footage that you're seeing from this game is of course from the Nintendo Switch version. This is how it'll look on your TV, this is how it'll look on your handheld mode, so you can get a good feel for the game. I do appreciate the amount of races, I do appreciate the fact that there are no microtransactions, they pretty much put everything into the game, and it seems like they gave it a good effort. It's a solid racing game, it's nothing great, nothing groundbreaking, Nothing that'll be remembered a few years from now, but if you're looking to fill that racing void in your Nintendo Switch library, Gear Club's not too bad. It's definitely a game you should probably check out, or at least, you know, I guess you can't rent it because it's only physical at GameStop, so I was gonna say rent it from Redbox, but cross that off the list because gotta love those GameStop exclusives. But yeah, Gear Club Unlimited, it's solid, and you know, that's all I can really say about the game. So. Let me know in the comment section if you are going to pick up Gear Club Unlimited, what you think about the game, if you would have preferred it to have online multiplayer, if you would have preferred it to have more realistic racing, because honestly, I think if they did a sequel of this game and really just made it for the Nintendo Switch and didn't even have the mobile aspect, I think it's got a good groundwork and I think it could be a solid game. 
Thank you for checking out this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this review of Gear Club Unlimited on the Nintendo Switch. I'm very surprised I didn't call it Drive Club because I keep calling it Drive Club on social media and stuff. Thank you for checking out this review. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. Let me know what you think of the game in the comments section down below. Are you going to check out Gear Club because you might like it? All right, I'll catch you guys next time. Later.